we've had a look at a variety of different properties and I've tried to group them in categories. The very first one was about chords. Uh, I should say, categories that somewhat overlap. The first one was about chords, then we looked at angles. What other kinds of things have we looked at within circles? Most recently, we looked at, we looked at particular kinds of quadrilaterals. Do you remember that? What do we call a quadrilateral when it's all on the circumference? We call it a cyclic quadrilateral, very good. So now we're moving into tangents. Now, if you have a look at these three, uh, I've got them on the left and the right just because I, wanted, I want them projector space. Um, it's quite obvious that these first two have to do with tangents. By the way, we're going to fill these in in a second, these mystery words. The last property doesn't look like it has anything to do with tangents because this uh, word here, that's the blank, it's not tangent. So <laughs> what does this have to do with anything? Well, that will emerge once we get to it. Okay. So for starters, we're going we're gonna to prove these very briefly. But in order to know what we're proving, well, we should draw these things and then we'll know what this property is and then we can set out to actually prove it deductively. So have a look at the first one. Tangents, or a tangent, is something to the radius at the point of contact. All right, what that means is, we all know what a tangent is. A tangent just touches, hence the name, just touches a circle at a single point, and we call that unimaginatively, the point of contact, okay? So go ahead, draw yourself a circle, draw a tangent, any tangent that you like, and then at the point where that tangent intersects with the circle, at that point of contact, I'd like you to draw the radius. Can you go ahead and do that for me? Mercifully, this is a fairly simple diagram. You can see mine over on the right-hand side there. There's my tangent. You can draw yours anywhere that you like. I put in the center so that now it's very straightforward to draw in the radius. So when you draw that radius, no matter how big your circle is, no matter where you have placed your tangent, you should see what's the relationship between the tangent and the radius at the point of contact. They sure look like they're at right angles, don't they? Okay. Now, of course, it's not enough to just say they look like they're at right angles. We want to prove that this is the case. As with most geometry proofs, there's a variety of different ways to do this, but this way I'm about to show you is one of my favorites. Okay? Um, don't worry too much about all of this fluff on the left-hand side. It's just what I had to put into Desmos to make these, these, these shapes. I want you to observe what's going on. As we did with calculus, our way of understanding tangents often starts with understanding a simpler shape, namely a secant, right? Because a tangent's sort of like a special version of a secant. It's the, what happens to the secant when it doesn't cut twice, it's when it cuts once. So I want you to have a look at this shape here with me. I've got a secant that can move up and down, okay? Like, whoops, there we go. Oh, why so much lag? Sorry, I've just got bad at that. That's better. There we go. Okay. So you can see there's my orange secant, right? And as I move the secant up and down, you can see the situation changing. No big deal. Okay. Um, as you can see, if I moved it to there, <laughs> my radius, unfortunately, my radii, they disappeared just because of the way that I've set up these equations. But you can see it's clearly still where it is, just like ours is. In fact, I can even draw it right now. Where's the center? Somewhere like here. There's our situation, we've got our right angle. Okay, does that make sense? Now what I want you to notice is as I go back to the secant, I want you to notice the angle that sort of corresponds to this, because the angles were all moving about. What is the angle and where is it? So watch what happens when I move it. If I can aim properly, there we go. Okay, <coughs> I, missed this. <laughs> I missed the center, me. I got pretty close. This angle here was right beside where I intersect with this line, right? So what that corresponds to, this angle here corresponds to, let's get rid of it, this angle over here. I'm gonna give it a name, I'm gonna call it theta. And on your diagram, which let's just pause it here, we're not gonna move it around for the next component. Let's just create this diagram and name that angle over there theta. Let's just call it that. And let's see how we can reason out what's going on, okay? This angle theta is the angle formed between the radius and the secant. 
Not the radius and the tangent, because it's not a tangent yet, but the radius and the secant. Okay, so you can clearly see they correspond to each other, they're um, connected ideas. Right, so where can I go from here? Um, I want to prove that when this becomes, when this secant becomes a tangent, this line, or this angle rather, should be, well if it's perpendicular like we're suggesting, this angle should become 90 degrees, right? Which sort of intuitively, I said I wasn't going to move it, I'm going to have to get it back to the exact spot again. It's sort of intuitive, as um, we get wider and wider and wider, you can see that angle theta is moving down over there, it's close to a straight angle, do you see that? It's close to 180. And then as I bring it down, you can see it gets closer and closer to that 90, whoop, there we go, closer and closer to a right angle there, okay? What was it, 1.35 or something? Is that what it was? Yeah, awesome, okay. So, I wanna try and get to this, I wanna show that this is going to become 90 degrees. So let's start to reason through it. Adjacent to theta is on this straight angle, another angle inside the circle. What's the size of this angle? That's not too hard to see. So that's 180 minus theta. But because of the way we've constructed this diagram, you notice that we have radii here, right? So what kind of triangle is this triangle inside? It's isosceles, which means that if that angle over there is 180 minus theta, then this one over here is also 180 minus theta, okay? Now once you've got two angles in a triangle, you also know the third angle. This takes a little bit of thought. What's this angle going to be equal to? Remember, we want all three of these angles to add up to 180 degrees. Do you agree? Now look, I've already got 180 there, and then there's 180, that's 360. So whatever I'm gonna have to have, I'm gonna have to subtract 180, right? Do you see that's what's gonna happen? These guys are gonna become 180. But then I've got these pesky thetas hanging around. I want to get rid of them because the angle sum of a triangle has no thetas in it, it's just got 180. So how many thetas are they going to have to be here to balance it all out? Two theta. Do you agree? So that's what this angle at the center is equal to. Oh, and of course, just like on the opposite side, we've got theta here because it's symmetrical. Okay. So now, here comes the fun part. I'm going to borrow a bit of the language and notation that we used in limits. I'm not actually going to do a formal limit, this is somewhat of an informal proof, but I'm going to borrow the language. So I'm going to say, as this angle in the center, right? As this angle changes, what happens? Now, we want to turn this secant into a tangent, right? I want to turn this secant into a tangent by moving it up. So I want you to pay attention to this angle. What happens to 2 theta minus 180 degrees? Watch it. As I get closer and closer and closer to being a tangent, whoop, what is happening to the size of this angle? It's shrinking. In fact, at the spot that I really want, this angle should not even be an angle. It should be zero, right? So I'll just come back. Do you see, are the, are the gears turning in your head yet, right? Eh, that'll do, that's close enough. So what I'm going to think about is what happens as this angle approaches, so here's what we, we this is how we say it in limits, right? As it approaches zero, what's going on? Well, if two theta minus 180 degrees is approaching zero, this actually behaves a lot like an equation, doesn't it? Because if this whole thing is approaching zero, what's two theta approaching? It must be, right? Because this component has to balance out with this one to give you zero. Well, if two theta is approaching 180, then exactly half of that angle should be which is kind of exactly what the property says, doesn't it, right? So as this angle shrinks, these angles must approach 90 degrees. And that's it. It's informal, but I hope like the logic satisfies you, right? You see how we approached it? So tangents are perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact, okay? 